Today's math strategy video is understanding multiplication as scaling. So whenever we talk about um, the concept of scaling, I think about shrinking and stretching. It's something that is changing in size. So what we're going to look at today is ex see exactly how scaling affects numbers. So some a couple of vocabulary words you need to remember are factor. Just remember that a factor are the two numbers that we multiply together to get a product in a multiplication sentence. And so we're going to actually be looking at a vocabulary word called scale factor. And so right down here are going to be all of our scale factors. So we're going to be multiplying six by a scale factor of one tenth, one third, one half, five six, one, four thirds, two, two and a half, and three. So what we're going to do is after we do this, we're going to make a couple of inferences about what we notice as far as patterns in this chart. So I'm going to pick a different color where I can show up. So just know we're going to be multiplying all of these by six. So I have one tenth times six. So that gives me six tenths. I have one, a scale factor of one third times six, and that is two. And then I have one half times six, and that is three, because six sets of a half are three. Five six uh, times six is five. And then one times six is six. Okay, so now we have numbers that are, this four thirds has changed. So right here we had numbers that were, you know, less than one, now we've got one. Now we have numbers that are greater than one. So we've got four thirds times six, uh, four is 24, that's eight. Uh, six times two is 12. Uh, two times six is 12 and then six halves, so that'd be 15. Um, and then three times six is 18. Okay, so. I want you to take a look at, you know, these these numbers right here and then this right here and then these scale factors right here. So think about what do you notice out of this chart? Well, all of these scale factors are scale factors. less than one. Actually, I can abbreviate that. Less than one. So if I multi multiply by a scale factor that is less than one, I'm going to get a number that is less than. So let's just use six as our example. So we did six times a scale factor of less than one. I'm going to get a number that is less than six. And we'll look at another example to prove this too. So what about this part? If I do six times a scale factor equal to one, I end up getting a number that is equal to six. So even if I multiplied six times four over four, four over four is equal to one, I will still end up getting six because that would be 24 over four is equal to six. So no matter what I do, I'm going to get a number. This I'll, I'll get the same number I started with. So that would be equal to six. Now when I look at these scale factor numbers, this is six times a scale factor that is greater than one. And what happens is I get a number, I got eight, 12, 15, and 18, and all those numbers are greater than six. So let's look at the example here. So let's say that I had the number four and I wanted to multiply by two thirds. Okay, so that would end up as eight thirds, which is two and two thirds. So that is smaller than four. So four multiplied by a scale factor less than one is gonna get me a number less than four. Let's look at four times six over six. Now this is the one we just did, so that's 24 over six, which is four. I get the same number. So four times any number equal to six will get me four. Um, four times, let's do 17 thirds. 
four times 17 thirds, that is uh, four tens, that's 68 over three. And that would be three times 22, would be 66 and two thirds. 22 and two thirds is obviously larger than four. So this will be very important for your lesson coming up that you understand that when your uh, scale factor is, you know, less than one, you're going to have a number equal to what you started with. Um, or sorry, you're going to have a number less than what you started with. If you have a scale factor that's equal to one, you're going to get that number. And then a scale factor that's greater than one, you will have a number greater than what you started with. So that is the end of today's math strategy video.